So in a previous video, I showed how to set up Kubernetes on Fedora uh, using the Fedora official Fedora packages. So installing the packages, doing the setting up the configuration files, and then setting up a multi-node cluster in kind of a manual fashion. There's uh, there's actually not too many steps to that, but if you want to do it in a secure way where there's certificates between them, then it starts getting more complex, and uh, there's a lot of opportunity for um, error in making each step. So uh, since I've made that video, there's been some work upstream in terms of uh, the ease of deployment using Kubernetes. And if you've ever seen uh, one of the Docker Swarm demos, you know that uh, one thing that Docker Swarm does well is that uh, there's a good uh, de deployment experience where you just do a knit on one node and then join on the other nodes and boom, you've got a cluster. So um, the similar command for Kubernetes now is called kube admin. And so I'm going to go through that right now. If you go to the Cube Admin site here, which is Getting Started Guides Cube Admin, uh, it says that it only supports Ubuntu, the latest Ubuntu, and the latest uh, CentOS. But uh, th this repository that it has, it, it just can't contain statically linked binaries that run just as well on Fedora. Fedora. So um, the same process, you know, minus. Uh, yum substituting for G DNS and things uh, DNF and things like that. That it works for Fedora as well. So I'm going to do it on Fedora 25. Um, so I'm going to jump into this. Uh, so I'm just going to follow along the documentation. I, I've made a few little, a uh, few adaptions to make it uh, more efficient for Fedora and the you know yum DNF things like that. But I'm just gonna basically run this block right here. And I'm going to do it on the master and two nodes that I have ready. These are just standard Fedora cloud instances that uh, I just spun up and haven't done anything to. So I'm just going to run all those commands on all the nodes there. And hopefully fetching the metadata doesn't take too long. And we'll just do this all in parallel here. So one thing this does, um, you can see that it's going to install uh, kubelet, kubeadmin, kubecontrol. These are not the packages from the official, the Kubernetes packages from the official Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu Fedora repositories. Um, and this is just because, um, one, the, the Fedora packages trail uh, the upstream release somewhat now. Uh, that is changing. Uh, the Kubernetes packages in Fedora are used to... Uh, be held back by uh, the development pace of OpenShift, but that has since changed, and now the Kubernetes packages in Fedora track upstream. But this uh, for Kube Admin, uh, it actually uses the kubelet to bootstrap the entire cluster, and to do that, you have to have it the the configuration options in a certain way, and so the kubelet service file that comes with this RPM that Cube admin provides in this repository is a little different than what uh, Fedora provides. So that's we're just going to use that for ease of use today. And I might look in the future to see how we can use the upstream packages along with Cube admin. Okay, so we've installed all those packages. The next thing we need to do is run um, Cube admin init on the master. Now I'm going to use a flannel um, pod network. And if you're going to do that, it says right here, if you want to use flannel, you need to specify this. Okay, so we're going to add this at the end of the kubelet line. Uh, and that's just because the kubelet needs to know this information to configure properly. So we're going to hit that. And we're going to see that a lot of things happen here automatically. It's generating a token that's going to be used to join other nodes to this cluster. It's creating a certificate authority and creating all of the keys and certificates for the API server and service accounts and uh, creating the kubelet configuration files. Now, what it's doing now is it is actually using the kubelet on this node to bootstrap the control plane of the cluster, which is the API server, the controller manager, the scheduler. Um, and it's going to actually, at the end, add the kube DNS and kube proxy add-ons. So it's not installing RPMs here. It's pulling down containers and basically bootstrapping the cluster using the kubelet on the master. So it should be done here pretty soon. 
You can see it does a test deployment to make sure that the the API server is actually listening, that all the parts are that all the parts are interacting properly together. Okay, and so that's done. So um, the, it's telling us that the next thing we need to do is deploy a pod network. Okay, before we do that, I'm going to grab this line right here because we're going to need that later to join the nodes. So I would copy that off somewhere. Then uh, if we go back here, so step three is installing the pod network. So you can just use the cube control apply and grab the um, spec file for whatever CNI plugin you want to use. So we're going to go to the add-ons page. You can see here that there's five that are supported. I'm going to use flannel, so I go here. And you can see it takes me straight to the cube flannel YAML file. So I'll go take it to the raw output here, copy this. And then we do a cube control apply and then paste that in there. That's going to create a config map and a daemon set. And so the daemon set is, it is a pod that will be deployed on each node once and will configure the networking on that node um, so that the pods can communicate with one another. So if we do a, I know that you can do a watch on the cube control, but uh, I find it's e the presentation is better if I do this. So cube control get uh, pods all namespaces. Okay, so this is not printing off real well. This is gonna go off the edge of the video here, but the important stuff is here. Um, you can see that you wanna wait until cube DNS is uh, four for four here. Uh, cube DNS will hang until you get your uh, pod network up and running. And so that's kind of your indicator that the pod network is up and functioning is when the cube DNS is uh, the cube DNS um, service is fully functional. So let me shrink this back down. So now let's uh, run over to the other nodes, and with that join line that was uh, printed out at the end of the init, we can join our nodes to the cluster. Okay, so this is node one. I just ran it here. You can see I created a cluster uh, info discovery client and used my token and verifying signatures, blah, blah, blah. And it generates certs and configures this. You can see here um, it generating the certificate and then writing the kubelet uh, config file. Now, if we go back to the master, we can do a cube control get nodes. You can see that our nodes have joined the cluster here. So that's how easy it is. I kind of talked a lot and made it sound like there was more complication than it was, but it's basically, you can go straight down this, uh, this tutorial. One more. And uh, you know, while it says it only works for CentOS, it works for Fedora too. So that's a real easy way to get a multi-node uh, Kubernetes cluster up with uh, certificates and everything, uh, pod networking using CNI and everything, uh, just with a few commands.